Thanks, Bob. Well, we know it is not official yet. Aaron, I have to ask you, what type of relief were you feeling today knowing that 99 is likely returning to the Bronx? Yeah, I mean, yesterday was a, was a long, that pit in my stomach all day, uncertainty, rumors, tweets. Um, so it was, you know, it was a tough day, um, you know, that uh, fortunately, uh, looks like it ended really nice uh, when I when when I woke up this morning. While you had that pit in your stomach, you also elected to reach out to Aaron and have a phone conversation. What was that chat like? Yeah, I mean, I'll keep that between us. But basically, me just wanting to touch base with him and make sure he knows how I and we feel about him, um, and just make sure and to see where he was. You know, I mean. He's obviously someone that's really important to, to our team and our franchise, but someone that, you know, is important to me. And I just felt like I needed to at least, you know, as we get down to the finish line here, make it known and get a feel exactly from my standpoint where, where I thought he was and um, make sure I communicated with him properly. Did you feel better after that phone call? Were you able to rest a little easier? Uh, I don't know about that. I, you know, maybe a little bit better. Uh, it was good to talk to him and to see where he was and see what was going on um, and just just really, you know, really grateful to, you know, to Hal and what the, the Steinbrenner family just over and over just kind of delivers on these kind of things and and hopefully they were able to finish something off Aaron you talked last year about judge so often that sometimes you said you've ran out of superlatives to describe him how would you describe a, a team that has Aaron judge back and uh, as yeah. opposed to the the option of not having him back yeah I mean it would be enormous um, you know he just you know, the unanimous MVP or the runaway MVP, the runaway best player in the game last year, um, you know, a tremendous two-way player, and then just someone that, you know, I think leads our group and guys look to and look up to, um, you know, to have a superstar player that's also um, one of your culture drivers and, and one of how you want guys to... You know, if they model themselves after that, we're in, we're in good place. So when you have a great player that's also the best person, too, um, it's a pretty dynamic combination. What was the response like from some of the other guys on the team? I, I would assume that you heard from some other players with excitement that he was going to be back. Yeah, I mean, yeah, a couple texts, obviously, and... Um, you know, a couple texts leading up the, the other way when we weren't sure what was going on and we were a little fearful. So, um, you know, be, I look forward to connecting with a lot of guys on the team here over the next few days. And, um, you know, hopefully we get to a point where we're in a celebratory situation because we're bringing them back. We know as the Yankee manager what it would mean to you to have Aaron Judge in the lineup. But the baseball fan in you, the fact that Judge would be a forever Yankee and the fact that he would be a Jeter, a Posada, a Bernie Williams, a guy who could play an entire career with the Yankees. What does the baseball fan in you think about that potential? Yeah, I mean, and that's one of the things you picture, too. Um, you know, I, I think he looks perfect in that uniform. Um, but to have as, as, you know, as big a figure, a chance to be a, a historically great Yankee, um, you know, those are the thoughts that kept me thinking, of course he's going to end up with us <laughs> because he, you know, belongs on this team and, fin you know, on a Hall of Fame track and into Monument Park and into the Hall of Fame with that NY. Um, you know, those are the things that you kept hanging on to and knowing how much he loves um, this organization, this team, his teammates, the city, all those things kept kept making you a little bit more optimistic, uh, even in some down moments. When Hal goes out and goes 9-360 reported, what type of message does that send, not only to the team, but to the baseball world? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think sometimes we take it for granted because over and over again, um, you know, Hal and the family deliver for us, and it's something that, um, you know, we're lucky to be in an organization um, that consistently makes those kind of um, commitments and is involved like that, and, and this case uh, is right at the top of that list. You talked before about how he's a culture driver and mm -hmm. sort of when the best player on your team is also one of the hardest working players. 
What is your favorite Aaron Judge anecdote from 2022? What, what is your favorite moment when, as you reflect on the great season he had, there will be one moment that kind of embodies it for you? Um, I think we were in Seattle. Um, and his first at bat, he struck out, didn't have a great at bat, came back, and I even said something to him a little bit about the bat, and he said, it's my bat. I got you. And he hits, hits a homer his next at bat, and as he's running from third base to home plate, and, and we're in the third base dugout, he's looking at me the whole time. Like, And he came back when he's coming through uh, the dugout, he said, I told you. So he, he was apologetic for his lackluster first at bat and then uh, answered with a dinger the next one. Well, one thing we know, last season he did not have a lot of lackluster at no. bats. What will you remember from the home run chase? Um, man, I think the way his teammates over and over again responded. You know, I think they were genuinely more excited maybe than Aaron on through all of it. And the days when it could have been potentially a distraction, like it never was because you, I think it was a great indicator of just how much he's beloved because everyone felt such a significant part of it and rooted for it so hard. And to see the reaction from the entire team when he did get 62, um, I think, gave you a little peek into just how special a person this guy is. We talk so much about his offense, but you've reiterated a lot of times how complete a player he is. When you watch him play the outfield, there, there are so many things to like, but the one thing I wanted to ask you about specifically are the accuracy of his throws. He's got this four-seam, over-the-top throw, and he's perfect almost every time. Yeah, he's just fundamentally such a sound outfielder, and I think that goes back to, you know, the, the repetitions and the work that he's put in since he's been a very young player in this game and the minor leagues coming up. Um, and what always strikes me about his throwing, obviously has a great arm and he's accurate, but there's times when I'm like, I feel like I think he needs to hurry up a little bit and, and, and he plays fast by taking his time though. So he never rushes himself too much, but always seems to just put himself in a great position to make a play. Have you spoken to him since the news broke? I texted with him this morning, but I have not spoken to him. What do you think that conversation will eventually be like? Um, normal, normal. Um, you know, we've been at it together now a long time, so um, I think the conversation, uh, if we're able to, you know, get to the finish line, will be in, in, you know, where we go here over the next two months to get to get ready for uh, what we hope is a championship season. Now, when I spoke to you earlier, you seemed to indicate, when we spoke to Brian Cashman, he seemed to indicate the work was far from done this offseason. Do you expect more chips to fall here and you guys to acquire some more players? Yeah, we'll see. I mean, you never know the timing of all those things. Um, you know, I know Brian and his staff and the front office and scouts and analysts are all upstairs grinding away and trying to, you know, whether it's the free agent market, whether it's the trade market, whatever it may be, um, you know, the work never stops in trying to improve and uh, you know, hopefully we're, we're still still able to do some significant things um, the rest of the way this winter. You've talked about how you like your rotation. Brian has said the same thing, but as Meredith said, Brian has talked about the potential for upgrades. Carlos Radon is someone who is out there, great swing and miss stuff, tough guy, a talented guy, a guy who seems like he could be built for New York. When you see him, think about him, do you envision a future where maybe he joins the Yankees? I don't know. We'll see. I mean, that's you're talking about a really talented guy that that has obviously um, really started to realize his potential in this game the last couple of years. So, um, you know, again, I think I think they're up there exploring every option, and uh, we'll see we'll see where everything ends up. How dialed in will you be now that you know this one chip has kind of fallen? Are you still as actively in the meetings, in the conversations? Oh, no question. Yeah, I want to you know see where we're going, seeing what, what possibilities exist, what combinations potentially exist, and uh, yeah, hopefully we can continue to get a little bit better. I asked you earlier in the meetings about tinkering around with lineup cards, and you said, well, the roster isn't set yet, and it's still not set. We but got a big piece, though, right, right I was back about to in say, there. When you put your head on the pillow tonight, might you just wonder where, where number 99 fits in? 
Yeah, um, somewhere up up in that top of the order, one, two, or three. But um, excited to have our MVP potentially uh, back in that lineup. Aaron, what will the rest of the offseason be like for you? Um, going going back home tomorrow, um, and you know, kind of get ready for holidays and Christmas, and have a family vacation coming up right after the Christmas. But uh, we'll be in and out of the ballpark, and and again, just trying to prepare and get ready for for spring training, and and. Uh, you know, so we hit the ground running. Well, nothing like a 6-8 present under the Yankees Christmas <laughs> tree. How yeah. about it? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Aaron, thanks for the time. Safe travels back. Bob, we'll send it back to you.